What is going on everybody? I'm back, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Instead of doing a speed art or commentary or whatever else it is that I do on YouTube, I want to show you guys a couple things that I picked up recently. So this is not really gonna be, like, edited, I suppose, based on that long pause there. But I just wanted to show you guys what I picked up from like thrift stores, bookstores, just any store that I kind of uh, passed by in the past little while. Because maybe you guys are interested in some of the stuff that I collect. I do have a couple things, ooh, wrong way couple of things that are visible right there <laughs> but that's not really doing a good representation of some of the stuff that I actually do collect like up there there we go um, so maybe one day I'll actually walk you guys through like some other stuff I've collected throughout the last five six years here or whatever but today I just want to show you guys what I've kind of found recently so let's jump into that right now <laughs> okay I'm gonna start with showing off maybe some blu-rays that I found uh, so pretty much everything I buy, for the most part, unless it's on sale, is probably from a thrift store or like a used bookstore, used DVD store, or whatnot. And I was lucky enough to find Jurassic Park 3 on Blu ray. This is one of the ones that I was missing. I have the first two, I have Jurassic World 1 and 2, but I just didn't have Jurassic Park 3 to finish off the original trilogy. And it's pretty simple, bare bones release, but you know what? It was like four bucks and I was like you know what I need to have it there are actually quite a bit of like bonus features I remember having the DVD of this back in the day and it had probably all the same special features I'm not sure if there's anything new here or not and I do actually have a Japanese release on DVD of Jurassic Park 3 2 and 1 so yeah I don't know it looks like there's quite a bit of special features actually I have to give it a watch let you guys know you know what's going on I used to love watching special features back when I had more time I need to get like a Blu-ray installed into my computer so I can actually watch things on there. That'd be a good idea for me to do in the future. But actually, I think I'm going to get a new computer here in the next year or so. So when I do get a new one, I'll make sure I actually do have a Blu-ray player on it. <laughs> okay, now, speaking of Jurassic Park, I also found Jurassic World Dominion. Now, I was not a huge fan of this movie. But I'm an idiot. I'm a collector. I need to complete the collection, the series. There's very few times where I'm so upset about a movie that I don't get it because it will just drive me nuts not having it. But, you know, I think this is good enough. May I'll give it a rewatch. I think this is an extended edition, as it shows on here. Extended edition. So, maybe the extended edition makes the film good. I don't know if that's true or not. And it doesn't look like there's nearly as much... Um, bonus features as the Jurassic Park 3 the uh, Blu-ray. Looks like there's like three special features here. Battle of Big Rock, a short film, a new breed of VFX, Dinosaurs Among Us, Inside Jurassic World. Which is I guess a 45 minute long documentary which is nice. I'm not sure if there's anything else on here that that doesn't have. Although this release does come with the Blu-ray and the DVD release. And I was able to find this for again like around four dollars from a used bookstore. I was surprised to see it there because you don't usually see like newish movies, especially ones with like slip covers. So what I'm assuming is that someone probably bought this for like their nephew or their niece or whoever, their husband. They're like, oh, he likes Jurassic Park. He likes Jurassic World. Maybe their son. <laughs> and then he gets it and they're like, I did not like this movie. And then they just give it up. Maybe they got paid like two bucks from the thrift store just to have it just to give it to them and then they sell it for four bucks <laughs> I don't know either way uh, I'm glad to finish off the six film collection I don't have any of the animated uh, series that have come out I'm not sure if Netflix has ever put those out anywhere but um, yeah so I'm, I'm glad to have this in my collection I'm not a huge fan of the movie so you know that it, that it is what that is <laughs> it is what that is I don't know where I get these uh, sentences from <laughs> all right something else I found at a thrift store recently which was pretty exciting for me I'm a huge fan of E.T. E.T. the Extraterrestrial, if I get a good look. And I think this is a somewhat recent Blu-ray they put out. I don't think it's the version that has that horrible CGI <laughs> monstrosity of E.T. that they brought out. That was really bad. I think that Spielberg has destroyed that ever since the DVD release. Um, but yeah, this is another one that comes with like three hours of bonus features. It's just something about like older movies that they just used to put like so many special features on these movies and then they just port them over and over and over again. For each subsequent release so less looks like it looks like they've done that here I'm not sure if there's anything new compared to old releases but 
You know what? I was pretty excited to find this for like, again, like four bucks or something. Really not that much. And that's like four bucks Canadian. That's like three bucks US. <laughs> but yeah, so it comes with the Blu-ray and the DVD. It also comes with a easy to download version. Now, I'll probably never use this version. So whoever's watching this, if you want to first person to try to use this code. Now, this came sealed. <laughs> Someone had not opened this yet, I don't think. If I recall, I'm pretty sure I unsealed it. Um, so yeah, so whoever's watching this, if they want to redeem this, I think all you have to do is just follow what's on this card. So I'm gonna try to put it up to the camera. Maybe the camera will focus it. Come on, focus, focus, focus. All right, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so whoever's seeing this right now, the first person to download this, just you know, take it for yourself. I'm not going to use the download. I already have it on DVD and Blu-ray here. Hopefully that's clear enough. I can never tell. I'll go up a little closer for the steps. And is it going to... Oh, there it goes. All right. So yeah, whoever wants it. Press pause. Take it. Okay, you can press pause. <laughs> All right, moving on with the rest of the video. Okay, but yeah, I love E.T. Um, at the end of my horror dolls video i think that was the end of the horror dolls video like the top 10 one uh i made sure to put suggestions for other top 10s and one of the top 10s was top 10 et ripoffs now you'd be surprised there was like a little genre in the mid 80s where they were just like movies that were basically et but they changed it up a little bit the most famous of which of course is mac and me and that's mostly famous because paul rudd takes it on to conan o'brien every time he goes on there which is always fun to watch but there's like other versions, like other countries' versions of E.T. Just, I don't know what the trademark or copyright laws are on different countries, but there was like, every country had their own E.T. E basically. So, I'd be interested in doing a video like, just covering the weirdest E.T. ripoffs ever. <laughs> and also talking about the original E.T. Because, you know what? It's amazing. It's an amazing film. And animating him, too. <laughs> I actually did an illustration of him back in the day, and you can find it on my Instagram. And there might be a speed art on here. Oh, when I did my original Gaomon uh, review of the, I forget which one that was, like the 15500 or something. Um, 1550 maybe, I forget what the name of that uh, screen tablet I have was, that was called. I have the 2200 now, which is a much better tablet. So anyway, I think I was like thinking uh, back in the day, like, oh, they, they gave me this tablet to do the review, but I don't think people were going to watch it. So I kind of spliced in like an E.T. speed art into that video. So if you want to watch that, you can see a little speed art of E.T. And then you can also check out my Instagram and scroll down far enough and you can find E.T. somewhere on there. Alright, another one I just found just the other day when I was just going through one of the thrift stores that I like. Found Insidious on Blu-ray. I've actually never seen Insidious, or if I have, it's been a really long time because I don't remember what happens. I know that Patrick Warburton? Is that his name? No. Patrick Williams? No. Patrick Dempsey? <laughs> Whatever the guy's name is, uh, oh, wait, I will say it. Patrick Wilson. What did I say? Patrick Warburton? I think that's the guy who plays Joe in Family Guy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Patrick Wilson is really good. I like him in the Conjuring films, and I always kind of thought of Insidious kind of as, like, Conjuring Light, which is probably not fair to it. It's just another PG-13 horror series that I believe is produced by James Wan. Yep, James Wan. So I think I've just kind of lumped them together and I've seen all the Conjuring films so I'm not sure why I've never checked out the Insidious films. There's a new one coming out this year. I think that's kind of why I got this because I don't know. I think I might want to check out the new one in theaters. Um, so I want to like maybe watch this and then I'll find Insidious 2 streaming somewhere and I think the Insidious 3 is coming out is a direct sequel to 2 and then I'll try to watch the other two at some point and they also announced a spin-off series recently too which i think is strange to start a spin-off of a series that is when did this originally come out uh why is everything so hard to find on here 2010 yeah it seems weird to me that they're starting a spin-off series of a franchise that has like five movies already now they're trying to do spin-off stuff it could be good though i don't know i'm not gonna complain i love horror movies so you know, the more they want to make, the more the merrier. So yeah, I'm glad that this is my collection. Definitely gonna maybe watch it. Maybe I'll try to make my girlfriend watch it with me too. The most terrifying film since The Exorcist. I just 
just can't be true. But I still am excited to watch this. And I assume that someone didn't actually scratch out his eyes here. This is how the poster is supposed to look. <laughs> Alright, so that's that one. And the last Blu-ray that I found recently, although there's actually some other exciting stuff that I've found, so uh, I found Hobo with a Shotgun. This is a low-budget Canadian film, and it's based on... Do you guys remember that movie Grindhouse with... Uh, that was directed by Robert Rodriguez... Oh my god, what, what is wrong with me in names today? Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino. They basically made this, like, Grindhouse double feature film. Rodriguez's was Planet Terror, and Quentin Tarantino's was Death Proof, I think? <laughs> The better film is Planet Terror by Robert Rodriguez, which is disappointing because I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Quentin Tarantino. I know that they've worked together before on Dust Till Dawn and stuff, but yeah, I was looking forward to Death Proof really badly, but then when I watched it, I was like, man, Planet Terror slaps, but Death Proof didn't really do it for me. But either way, between those movies, they had little fake trailers, and one of the fake trailers was Machete. That got turned into a real film with, I think, Robert Rodriguez directing the two of them, or maybe at least producing them, I can't remember, starring Danny Trejo. There was also, uh, what was the other ones? There was like some kind of like Nazi one or something. I don't think anything's ever happened with that one. There's like a Thanks Killing one. I don't think, what was it called? Thanks Killing? I don't remember. It was like some kind of uh, Thanksgiving slasher film. And that one right now is being turned into an actual movie, which is strange. <laughs> like, almost... Oh, how old are those movies? Like, those, those were like my high school days. So, like, 2008, if I had to guess. Maybe 2006? That's like... 15 years ago. <laughs> it seems weird to be making movies based on fake trailers from 15 years ago. But I'm all for it. Uh, I think there was like... Uh, there's a couple other ones. But in the Canadian version that they sent out over here... I think they mandated that they had to add like some kind of Canadian trailer in that part and the fake Canadian trailer they added was Hobo with a Shotgun and it starred I, if it, possibly it was Robert <laughs> uh, Rugger Hauer in the fake trailer but either way they got Rugger Hauer in Hobo with a Shotgun here and I remember watching this on TV maybe cable or something in Canada and I actually remember liking it quite a bit it's cheesy it's quite violent <laughs> But, you know, just the premise alone, Hobo with the Shotgun, like, I'm sold on that. <laughs> Give me a Hobo with the Shotgun too. although, is Rugger Howard dead? <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> but either way, maybe, like, the son of the Hobo with the Shotgun. Sobo with the Shotgun. You know what, that's what the suits in Hollywood. That actually comes with quite a bit of, like, special features on here. And, you know what, I, like, a lot of special features. It's actually crazy. I guess it, oh, it says back on here, Grindhouse Trailer Contest Winner, Hobo with a Shotgun. So I guess there was some kind of contest they put on in Canada. Maybe it was all of North America, I have no idea. But either way, this got showed with the Canadian showings that I saw. So when they made the actual movie of it, and when did this one come out? 2011. So I'm not sure how long that is between Grindhouse and Hobo with the Shotgun. I think 2008 sounds right for those movies, but I might be wrong. Um, either way. If you ever find this movie around, I grabbed this at a thrift store. I didn't pay full price. But if you can find it for like less than 10 bucks, I remember really enjoying it. I haven't rewatched it recently once I've since I've grabbed this, but you know what? It's fun. If you like the Grindhouse movies, you'll probably like this. And if you like classic Grindhouse movies, you'll probably also like it. Okay, so that is all the Blu-rays that I've found recently. But I want to show you something that I've actually ordered on Amazon. Now I I kind of stopped collecting a lot of toys because I just kind of ran out of space on the shelves that I've allotted for myself. I've recently made a little bit of space, but I think I'm going to put like some of my movies up there as opposed to more action figures because I just don't know where else to put them. I literally have some hanging <laughs> just right up there. Um, so yeah, I want to show you guys. So I don't buy too much, but like I think I found some space for these guys that I have. And I collect the Mego horror line, Mego sci-fi line, and sometimes Mego superheroes and stuff. Just like this kind of classic lines that they do. Um, it's not, I don't actually collect like the old real vintage ones. So those are, if I actually saw some of those ones, I would pick them up. Um, if it was at like a used store or like a swap meet or something. But some of the prices for some of those original ones are like through the roof. <laughs> and I'm not going to 
spend like, you know, a day or a week's worth of pay on one action figure. That'd be crazy. Uh, but I do grab these when they're on sale on Amazon, and this was like less than 20 bucks. And I found Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the newest film. Yes, I know, I haven't updated the Texas Chainsaw Massacre animation. I know I haven't. I haven't updated it because I know when I do update it, I want to do a complete reanimation in a similar vein to what I did with Michael Myers. And I know that maybe it sounds like that'll be easier to start from something that I've already done. But if I do it the same way I did Michael Myers, I kind of threw out everything that I had done with that. And I started from scratch from the script, the designs, uh, even the incidental designs, the uh, color slides, the sounds, pretty much everything was different. Obviously there were some... Uh, it was a Venn diagram where they like, met in the middle where there's a couple of things that I was able to like use. So if you look at like uh, the one scene where Michael is being fed soup by the old hermit, I use that same animation for the old hermit, but I've updated his model inside of it. And then there's a couple of like silhouette shots of like people who shoot Michael or whatnot where I've updated those things. Man, I'm getting off at a tangent here. Either way, one day I will update the Leatherface video. Not sure when it will be. I, last I heard, Sony even announced a new re reboot being done. I'm not sure if it's going to be related to this film or not. But if it is, if it isn't, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Either way, so I got this for like less than 20 bucks. It's Amigo Leatherface from the, I was going to say the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, from just Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What a franchise, what a titling. <laughs> but either way, I really like the design of Leatherface from the 2023 film. Or was it 2022? No, no, it, was, it would have been 2022. Right now it's 2023, which sounds crazy to me, 2023. It's like I'm in the future. But either way, the 2022 film, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Was it as good as the first two films? No. Was it even, did I even enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the third film? Probably not. I have quite a bit of nostalgia for that film. Did I like it as much as the remake probably not did i like it about the same amount as the remake prequel maybe i don't know i definitely liked it better than 2017 and maybe it was on par with 2013 um you know i kind of like i like 2013 uh so i like this one too i thought it was pretty good and i especially liked his look in this film very like visceral he's big he's old it, like how many old man leatherface this have we had so far 2013 and this one um I'd be down to see more old man Leatherface. The guy's a tank. Obviously, the person who's playing him probably isn't as old as Leatherface would actually be. But I like this action figure. And I think I have a... One day, maybe I'll do like a video where I show all my Mego line. Because I have the version from the remake over there somewhere. And I have them sitting beside each other on a small little... <laughs> on a small little shelf with a lot of my Texas Chainsaw Massacre stuff. But yeah, either way. I really liked this uh, toy, so I grabbed it. And in that same vein, this one was also on sale. This is Ghostface. Now, this is Ghostface. Ghost Face. It's two words. Um, so I think they only needed to get permission from, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Fun World. So they didn't need to actually get permission from the movies, I don't think. Because it doesn't say Scream anywhere, it just says the icon of Halloween, Ghostface. And if you look at the costume, it looks more like like the crappy Ghostface costumes you can buy from Fun World. Because it has the belt there, has like the jaggedy, ripped off bottoms and stuff. The boots are pretty much what they look like in the actual film. Sorry, I'm not sure if you guys can see, there's a lot of glare here. Um, so yeah, I think... Either way, I thought it was pretty interesting. For a long time, I feel like there wasn't, we weren't really getting much Ghostface stuff, go, Ghostface Scream merch. But, oh look, I'm in the reflection of the thing there. But I look funny. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, I like this one because it has like a blood, like a bit of blood on its face here. I'm not sure if that's a variant or if that's just what it always looks like. Um, either way, I, I like this action figure. It's not as good as, say, NECA, who probably actually has the license for, you know, for the actual films. <laughs> but for what this is, like a 80s, 70s style Mego action figure, I think it looks pretty good. 
Okay, so those are the two action figures that I've grabbed recently. Not buying that many action figures in the past while. I've actually completed a couple of lines that I was collecting. Now, like, I see those lines continuing in stores, but, like, they're kind of different. So I haven't really grabbed much from them. But either way. So, and I grabbed, also grabbed a couple of books, and I'm saving the best book that I found for last. Um, but yeah, so I grabbed this book for, like, 25 cents at a, like, some thrift store or whatever. Uh, Predator Concrete Jungle. Now, when I first grabbed this, I thought this would be a novelization of Predator 2. Because I've heard people call the jungle of LA a concrete jungle. Um, this looks like it's just like some kind of spin-off book. I'm not sure when it came out, 1995. So it looks like it came out, but like after Predator 2 came out. But it might have been put out around the same time as that film to kind of like be like, look, he's in the city. <laughs> By the way, I really like the cover on this guy. Here, get a closer look on it. And is it gonna... Is it going to focus? I don't know. But either way, yeah, I really like the cover on this. I thought it looked, pr like, pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna read it. <laughs> I don't have as much time to read stuff as I wish I did. Uh, it's a Dark Horse science fiction novel, so Dark Horse put this out. And yeah, I just thought it was fun, so I grabbed it. And now I have it sitting on my shelf. Okay. Now I have two books here that kind of go hand in hand, but I'll start with the one that I was probably most excited to find, and that's the novelization of Halloween 3, written by, written by, well, doesn't have his name right here, a new screen shocker by Jack Martin, and it says based on the screenplay by Tommy Lee Wallace and John Carpenter slash Deborah Hill production. So yeah, just has that classic Halloween 3 poster, and it's in... For a book that's probably like, what, 40 years old or something? It's in pretty great shape. Now, it's not one of those books that has any photos on the inside of it, like novelizations sometimes do. And it doesn't have like too much information on the back. But this is like an original release of Halloween 3 Season the Witch. And I just found this at a thrift store for like two bucks. I had no idea that this even existed. Like, I knew that there was like novelization. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there was like novelizations of Halloween and Halloween 3 and Halloween 4, maybe Halloween 2. And I know that there's new novelizations of the new trilogy. Not sure what other ones have novel novelizations out there. So I wasn't really looking for this. I look at like the the vintage like book sections of my thrift store. I collect Goosebump books as well when I can find them. I'm trying to get that whole line. I think I'm only missing like 7 now or something. But either way, that. So I wasn't looking for this. But as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to grab it. I knew I had to grab it. I didn't know that it's worth anything. I knew nothing. So I just grabbed it and I was like, I love Halloween 3. Didn't know this existed. I don't know how old this book is. So when I got home, I looked it up. And obviously I can tell from like the pages that they're a little bit like yellowed. Because they're probably older. But I looked it up and like these are going for like 120 bucks on like eBay and stuff. If not more. And I was like, holy, I got lucky. Because <laughs> this is like two bucks I got this. I just like hopped into the thrift store one day. I was like getting my, uh, I think it was at like a dentist appointment or something. And so I just walked across the street to like the thrift store that I tend to go to like once a week or something. And I was like, you know what? They're just opening. I'll see what they have. I'll just pop in and then go back right back to work. And I just found this. And I was like, whoa. I was like flipping. Flipping in excitement. <laughs> but I got something that kind of goes hand in hand with it, which some people will probably be more excited by than Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Although, this is my favorite Halloween movie, and I don't care. I know I have a very controversial ranking of Halloween on my channel. And the controversial as in it got like 95% likes instead of 99% likes. <laughs> but, nonetheless, this is my favorite Halloween movie. I'm very excited to have this. Put it beside my Halloween 3 shelf, basically, is what I have going on. But... What I also found in this, on the same day is the original, novel, the, the original novelization of Halloween, 1978. And I believe this might have come out in 1979. Now this one has really yellowed pages. On the outer edges, at least. So you can tell it's like, this is vintage. Um, and yeah, I was just as shocked to find this. Found them, two, the, the both of them, just chilling there. On like a Tuesday morning at my thrift shop. Wasn't even planning on going in. And I'm like, what? What is this? And like, again, I didn't know these things were worth anything. I was just excited because 
I love Halloween. I love the... F really, I love, like, all the Halloween movies. But there's ones that I love more than others. <laughs> and there's a couple that I find hard to rewatch. But the first four, at least, and probably even five I've come around on a little bit, and six, uh, and H2O, and... You know, even Resurrection, I think I have fun with. So the original eight, I can easily watch probably any time, and especially during the Halloween season, and put on. But there's something special about the first film, because it's the first film. And I don't think they knew what, like, the draw of the franchise was based on this poster, because it doesn't really make much sense. Like, yeah, Michael does wear a bed sheet for, like, a scene or something. He definitely doesn't put a pumpkin on his head. <laughs> and, like... You know, if they put out like a Halloween novel now, Halloween novelization of 1978, they'd be putting Michael Myers all over this thing. They'd have his mask in there, they'd have his knife on the side. It would be like Halloween, a Michael Myers story or something. Because then, you know, that's what sells in this franchise. They try something different. Every time they try something different, people hate it. <laughs> Halloween 3, people hate it. I love it, but people hate it. Uh, Halloween Ends. Uh, a movie that still has Michael in it, but not enough Michael. A lot of people hate it. I also didn't love it, but it wasn't because Michael wasn't in it enough. Um, I thought it was interesting. I'm getting off on a tangent. Either way, I was very excited to find this. And, you know what? I actually might read this, because this really doesn't look like it's that long of a book. 165 pages? I feel like that's shorter than this one. Yeah, this one was Halloween 3 is like 220 pages. Yeah, either way, so I found like, some pretty exciting books recently. I found these guys a few weeks back, um, but I wanted to show them now because, I don't know, I just, there's something special about them. And they just smell like old book. I love that old book smell. I don't know what it is about old books. They just have like a very certain je ne sais quoi. Is that a word? Je ne sais quoi? <laughs> Why do I even try? Anyways, I've picked up some other stuff recently. I might do a follow-up video on this um, every now and then. Just to throw in something a little different. But you know what? Oh, and my dog's just starting to go nuts. <laughs> Not sure if you guys can hear him from where we are. I can hear him. Benny! He's not going to listen. Uh, anyways, so, yeah, I guess that's everything. The Blu-rays, the books, a couple of toys. So I just wanted to show you guys and talk to you guys. And, you know, let me know what you guys have found recently down in the comments below. I always like kind of seeing that stuff. Um... And talking to you guys because I think as like movie lovers um, you collect a lot of stuff stuff that like kind of brings you joy I hate this I think I stole that from Marie Kondo is that her name <laughs> uh, but it's nice to have, like have mementos of the things that you that, that bring you joy like the movies you like the characters you you like that you grew up with that you have nostalgia for like it's a lot of fun I think so, yeah, if you guys have been collecting something recently, uh, let me know. I'd be down to, like, take a look or, like, message me on Instagram or whatever or Twitter. I try to be pretty good with responding to people. <laughs> Sometimes I don't check it for a few days. So I'm, especially if I'm working on, like, a video really, like, like doing long hours on a video at, at that time. But either way, let me know what you guys have been up to. I don't get what you guys have been watching recently. I just watched Scanners for the first time recently. It was on, I think it was on HBO Max, which we, I don't know if we have HBO Max here, but it was on Crave in Canada. And I just saw it. I was like, I've never seen Scanners. So I tossed it on. It's a David Cronenberg movie. The Fly is one of my favorite movies of all time. The Fly too, very underrated. Not Cronenberg, but still very underrated. Um, so I was like, I've never seen Scanners. So I was going to toss that on. I did a little poll on, thing, on Instagram, be like, hey, you guys know what I'm watching? I think like three people got it right and you should get like so like 50 or 60 or 100 guesses i got like 10 guesses people I think people are letting that film slip under the radar a little bit because nobody seems to talk about it anymore but check out scanners if you can it was pretty good it's not like it's not nearly as good as like the fly or even the dead zone which i think those films have a bit more heart to them um but like just concept wise it's really interesting um well, I'm just going off on tangents here. <laughs> so, I'm just going to stop the video here. I'll... Uh, ba, 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 I don't know how to end this. So, I will just say a goodbye. And I've been Aaron. And I'll tell you something later. <laughs>